guys, but even the gingers laugh at me. <laughs> so last year, I was seeing this girl named Melissa, and she sent me a Facebook message just saying, oh, Johnny, my flatmates are out this weekend. Do you want to come down and hang out? I thought, flatmates are out. That can only mean that you're actually inviting me to at least one night of wild, very noisy, possibly acrobatic sex. <laughs> Johnny McLean is attending. <laughs> So it's all good. I leave, I get there, I get to a building, I get in the lift, and that's when problems start. Because you might have already guessed, I'm slightly socially awkward at times, and I'm feeling fairly tense. So I think, I'm going to do something silly. I'm just going to alleviate the moment. So as the lift door closes, I just stick my head in the way. No idea. <laughs> Happens the second time. I do it again. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm proving man's prowess over technology. <laughs> it happens a third time. <laughs> I've just achieved what sensory technicians have striven for 50 years to avoid. I have just gotten my head stuck in a lift door. And of course, we have to ring the maintenance man, but obviously, we're in a lift. Bad signal. So Melissa finds herself bent over me like that, trying to talk to him. I'm still down here, and I feel that I knew we were going to be in this position, but I was kind of, had high hopes it'd be the other way around. So, the maintenance man comes, he lets us out, we go up the stairs, but the lift is now out of order. And within 30 seconds of arriving, I've ruined the ascending experience for the entire building. And I'm fairly sure there was a fucked off man in a wheelchair on the fourth floor, now stuck in his flat for a week, reenacting Castaway, shouting Wilson at a bowl of noodles. <laughs> and so, I'm socially awkward, but determined. So we go upstairs and say, oh, Johnny, fancy a nice couple's bar? I think, a bit odd, but okay. So we get in, the water's warm, there are bubbles, I'm at the slight centre of the bar, so there are no taps in my back. And it's all good, until she decides to wash her hair. What followed that decision can only be described as my first anal experience <laughs> in receiving. <laughs> she decides she wants to wash her hair. She points under the water and says, oh, Johnny, can you grab me the shampoo? I stand up and, yeah, fine, no problem. I slip. Suddenly, I'm not so happy about being at the sloped end of the bar because I find myself in this position, hurtling towards an outstretched finger. <laughs> she knows it's too late to move it. I know it's too late to move it. I'm just bracing myself. She looks horrified by the whole situation. What should have then followed has been... But it didn't. Because Melissa has long nails. <laughs> what began as a nice couple's bar has now turned into some kind of strange X-Men pornographic film in which I've been violently sodomised by fucking Wolverine. <laughs> I mean, by that point, the mood is ruined, evidently. I mean, she's not going for it. And I don't think I can have relations with a woman who knows the inside of my ass that intimately. <laughs> and so, we decide, you know, let's call it a day. We'll just go home, I'll catch the next train, and that's what I do. But the problems didn't end there. Oh. I'm on the train, first off, there's a girl who's also returning home to Leicester from where I was, and she always gets to the fucking doors first, as being increasingly panicked by a marooned man following her from train to train. <laughs> Problem number two, the train is crowded, and I'm stood here sitting next to this man with his hand just resting there. I don't know if you've ever been on a train, but in my experience, they tend to rock when they move. <laughs> and suddenly I find myself forcing an uncomfortable middle-aged man to give me a hand job. <laughs> We're both feeling fairly awkward about the situation, but I think, fuck it, I've had a shit weekend. I'm gonna have some fun with this, so I decide to wink at him. <laughs> but he's not looking me in the eye, so I wink again. He's still not looking. I find myself repeatedly winking at him <laughs> until he will look me in the eye and accept that this is happening. Problem number three. I then spy the girl who at the moment thinks I'm following her home cross counties across the carriage. I think, brilliant, what a great moment to give her a nice, warm, friendly smile and just show I'm not crazy, I'm not a rapist, it's all fine. I evidently had forgotten what other activities I was currently engaged in. <laughs> Instead of that, she experienced this. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever received a creepy smile from a man with a nervous tick who's forcing a hand job from another uncomfortable man. For me, that is the definition of crazy and rapist. <laughs> he was okay, I got home, I thought the weekend's over horrible, but it's done, I can calm down, log into Facebook, and that's when I realised that the woman I've been seeing had the most cruel 
and wicked sense of humor I had ever known in a person. Because I glanced aside into Facebook and I saw this notification. Melissa has poked you. <laughs> I've been John McLean. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.
this is going to be amazing. He's so hairy and small. And then Ruben, like, and then we were all disappointed. I'm joking. What, like, was he really good? Yeah. Right, next up, we have our third and final girl. <laughs> We're bored of girls now, Jack. Bring on more dudes, I want to see some cock. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't want to sound rude or anything, but you sound like you love dick. Uh, I'm just going to ask this, we're going to put this out there because I think this is what everyone else is thinking. Are you addicted to cum? <laughs> are you? Some people are and are not thinking it. If you can, you cannot answer, it's fine. Uh, there's health groups and stuff like that. Are you kept in a cage and you have to eat the cum out of the cage like a hamster? <laughs> just going up to it and just... <laughs> Please welcome Celia Wilding. <laughs>